Hello YouTube, welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Excellence. Today we're going to take a look at the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions. Just before we get started, this is an in-depth review. If you'd like a quick overview, then check out my 2 minute tip on this topic by clicking this link. Secondly, I'm based in Europe, so when entering an equation, I use the semicolon to separate the arguments. However, depending on where you are in the world, you may need to use a comma instead. Alright, so let's get started. Before we jump into the different arguments used in the function, let's take a quick look at how they work and how they might be useful. VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP perform the same role, just in different orientations. As the name suggests, VLOOKUP is when you have a vertical list in a column, such as this one, and HLOOKUP is used when you have a horizontal list all on the same row, such as this set of dates here. These are designed so that for any value in a list, we can obtain the corresponding value in the same row or column. So with this list, if we wanted the value of the fifth name but two columns across, then we would use the VLOOKUP formula. If we wanted to find the certain date in this horizontal list and get the value in the third row down, then we would use the HLOOKUP formula. One thing to note with VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP is that they only work one way. The value that you are searching for needs to be in the first column for VLOOKUP and in the first row for HLOOKUP. So let's have a look at the arguments in the formula. You can of course just start typing the equation and you will be prompted for the inputs, but for clarity, I'm going to open the function window. To do this, you go to Formulas, Lookup and Reference, and today we'll select VLOOKUP from the bottom of the list. Here we have a brief explanation of the function and how it works. The function looks for the value in the leftmost column and outputs the corresponding value from an adjacent column. It also states that the table must be in ascending order, which is not strictly true, and most of the time my tables aren't in order, but more on this later. So here we have the lookup value. This is the value that we want to search for in the list. This can either be an entered value or a cell value. In our example we're going to look for the name John, so let's type that in. Table array. This is the table arranged that we're going to search in. It must contain the list that we will find the name in and also contain the output value. In our example we will select this entire range. Column index number. This is the column number in the table or range that contains the output, with column 1 being the list you are searching. We want the value from two columns across, so we will enter 3. And finally, range lookup. This is either true or false. This determines whether or not the value is to be an exact match. Although this is an optional field, it is almost always required to be false, as leaving it blank will be assumed to be true, and this is generally not the case. This relates to the list being in order, which we will look at shortly. For this field you can use 0 for false and 1 for true. Since we want an exact match, let's enter false. Alright, so now that we know how it works and what inputs the function requires, let's have a look at how it's useful. For example, if we were to look at this list of names and ages, and we wanted to find the age of a certain individual, then we can use the VLOOKUP function to do that. Alternatively, we could scroll through the list until we find the right name, but this is frustrating and each time the name changes, we would have to find the name again. In this example, we have the same scenario except there are calculations applied to the age and there is an extra value, the individual's current savings. Without VLOOKUP, we would have to find the individual, remember the values, go back to the top and enter the correct numbers. There are a lot more extra steps in this process, so using the VLOOKUP function is a better option. Or what if you wanted to apply the equations to a number of different people, or different information was coming from different tables? In these situations, the lookup function makes it a lot simpler. So in this example, we have a calculations worksheet, an information tab, and raw data. What we want is to obtain the age of the individuals from the information worksheet, and the current savings from the raw data. So first, the VLOOKUP to get the age from the information table, equals VLOOKUP, open bracket, the value that we're going to look for is the name, the table array is on the information worksheet, so let's jump there and select the range. We also want to fix this range, so pressing F4 will do this. The column we want the age from is the second column, 
and we want an exact match for the name, so we put false. Now the VLOOKUP for the savings value that we have on the raw data worksheet. Equals VLOOKUP open bracket. The value which is once again the name. The table array is the values on the raw data worksheet. And we will select them all. In this case it doesn't matter whether or not you select the headings. Also once again we will fix the range by pressing F4. From here we need the total value in column 5 and we would like an exact match so false, close bracket, enter. Now if we click the bottom right corner and drag the formula down or double click in the bottom right corner the equation will apply to all names. We will look at a couple more examples shortly but before that I want to discuss the last argument in the function, the range lookup. As I mentioned earlier, this is used to determine whether or not you want an exact match. Entering false or zero means that you want an exact match, and true or one indicates that you want an approximate match. So why would you ever want an approximate match? Well consider you had this list of test results, and you wanted to know what grade each person received using this score chart. If you were to try and use an exact match, then you would be required to have every number on the score chart so that an exact match can be found. And even then, it may not be comprehensive enough because the percentages aren't exact numbers. So instead, we use approximate match. To start, let's enter the formula and see what happens. Equals VLOOKUP open bracket. The value that we want to find is the score. The table array is the grade table. We want to get the value in the second column and we will make the range lookup true. See how this finds the right grade without requiring an exact match with the grade table? Now if we go back into the function and have a look at the comment that pops up, it says that the first column must be sorted to get an approximate match. Why? Because when approximate match is true, the function goes through the list until it reaches a value that is higher than the desired value and takes the previous result. I've only used this a few times before and there are only a few examples that I can think of as to when it would be useful. It does become useful when you are looking up values that are in a range such as this grade example or when using dates. Now let's take a look at a couple of common errors that arise when using the lookup function. Nothing is more annoying than entering in a formula and having it display an error. There are a couple of reasons that you will get an error. We can start to diagnose these by clicking the error icon that appears. For the hash NA error, we get the value not available error. What this is telling us is that the value that we tried to look for is not part of the list. We are looking for Bob Ferguson but he is not on the list. If you are certain that the value is on the list, then another cause may be that you have not set the range lookup to false. Now the hash ref error. If we look at the information it states, invalid cell reference error. This is because you have entered a column number that is outside of the table array. For example, if we look at the equation, we have set the table array as B2 to C103, which is two columns wide. But we have stated that we want to look in column 3 for the answer. Since column 3 is outside of the table array, it is an invalid cell reference. The final error that you get may not be easy to pick up at first, and Excel doesn't know that it's an error, so you don't get an error message. The error is that you are not getting the correct information. If we look at the value that has been returned for the VLOOKUP function, it appears that everything is working correctly. But if we actually find the name, we see that the age of Clarence Curtis is actually 19. If we go back to the function, we can see that the range lookup has been left empty. Excel is then assuming our list is in order and we want to return the closest match, and not necessarily an exact match. Since we are trying to find a name, we obviously need an exact match, so need to ensure that we have the range lookup set to false. Another great use for the lookup functions is the ability to quickly compare two lists of information. If we go back to an earlier example and have a look at this list of names, we have the list from the information tab and we have the list from the raw data worksheet. Now you'll see that if we look at the count there are actually three extra names on the raw data worksheet that haven't yet been entered into the information worksheet. If these lists were in the same order it might be easy enough to scroll through the lists until we see where the name is missing. However this is not always easy if the lists are long. Instead let's use the VLOOKUP to get the missing names. So we'll go to our longer list here on the raw data worksheet. In the last column let's enter the VLOOKUP function. VLOOKUP open bracket, we want to look for this value from this table array on the information worksheet. Since we are only using this to compare the list, we only have to select the list and not the whole table, although either is fine. 
and for the column he'll just enter 1. This means that the answer returned will be the name, but this doesn't matter as we are looking for an error. And of course we put false as we want an exact match. Drag the equation to the bottom of the list, and as you can see there is an error already visible, so we know that this is one of the names that is not on the information worksheet and needs to be added. To check for the others we can just quickly apply a filter, and then filter the last column for errors. And there we have it. These are the three names that need to be added to the information worksheet. And lastly, some of you may be wondering if we could use both the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP combined to make it even more dynamic. For example, let's say we wanted to know how much Glen Farmer saved in the week starting the 15th of July. We would want to use the VLOOKUP to get the correct row, and then for the number of columns across, we would want to use the date to determine the column and not hard code it in. This can be done and it's not too difficult, but it is much better to use the index match function combination for this task. If you're not sure what the index match functions are, then here's a link to my video explaining it. If you have any other questions or anything else that you would like me to do a tutorial on, let me know by leaving a comment below. Also, if you like this video, click the buttons to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.